So you've been doing a lot of research into like the perfect formula yep. to make the hair grow. I didn't have any beard when I was 18, 17, really? 18, 19, 20, zero beard. And I said, okay, I need to have a beard. I went to the gym. I was extremely skinny, 1 meter 95 and 67 kilos. I love when I, I take my brain out and I take this product, think for a month, work with our suppliers in order to create a, a better version of the product launch it to the market, market it to our audience, and they all message us. I've been using this product from this brand for the past three years, and when I tested you, yours, it's a game changer. I want to make very, very clear, I'm not against ha hair transplant, but I'm against telling customers that you cannot do anything in order to maintain your hair. Mm. So you can do a lot of things that you can postpone hair transplant for as long as possible. My life philosophy is the following. In life, you have six jars. Health, family and close friends, financial, spiritual, intellectually, and socially. You have to fill them in with sand, and you have to fill them in equally. As you're talking, it seems like because you've done so much research, it's you know how difficult it is to copy you. I Therefore, mean, you're like, no one's going to do this. 98%, 99% of all the e-commerce business owners will not even have the money to invest in a project like this. Mm. Because just to launch the product, it cost me $80,000 in lawyer fees just for really? Amazon. Just for Amazon to say, you're good to go. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Aaron Darko Show. And today's guest is Mr. Tudor Tanas from Romania. And he is the founder of the Smart Group, which comprises of multiple businesses, one of which is the Follicle Booster, which is one of the main brands, which is helping guys basically regrow their hair without transplants. Exactly. Regrow hair and regrow beard. Thank regrow you so beard. much for inviting me, my friend. Yes, awesome. So we connected a, a few weeks ago now, and it's going to be a really interesting chat because, you know, we have a lot of synergy. We have a cr lot of crossover. You used to be a personal trainer for four years. Yep, exactly. Before I started my, my businesses, like five years ago, I used to be a personal trainer for four years. I trained in Romania, face-to-face uh, -face customers, and at the same time, nutritionist. So I had a lot of experience from that, which helped me a lot into my, into my journey. Mm. Yeah, so I'm curious, like, how, I mean, for people wondering, like, how did you get into what you're doing now? Like, what's the story there? So when I was super young, I, I used to play tennis professionally. Yeah. And I was, when the session ended, my father came to pick me up. And after a few sessions, I, I realized that all of the old kids, my father was the only one that came regularly to pick me up. And I asked him, why are you the only parent that picks me up? It's because I have a business and I own my time, he said. And then I realized from a very young age that it's extremely important for me to have a business, to have my own money and to own my time. Mm -hmm. For that, when I did personal training, I basically realized that I'm selling my hours, hours in order to for money, right? And mm. I cannot quantify and grow that exponentially so that the, my time investment is not tied with the money I'm, with the money I'm making. And then I realized, I, I did, um, I started a business in Romania, which I sell, sold supplements. But that's very interesting because that tied up with my personal training. I, I was selling these weight loss supplements together with a booklet with nutrition, what you should do based on your mm. sex and based on your weight, and together with a workout regime, with YouTube channel, um, exercises, all that. And that didn't went well. And then I decided to go internationally with e-commerce. So that's how I, how I ended up transitioning from a personal trainer, nutritionist into an e-commerce business mm. in U.S. mainly. Right, okay. Yeah. So you said you, the supplement company didn't, didn't go well. It didn't go well because, first of all, my execution was bad, was my first business. And when you do your first business, you're not very good at it, yeah. as everything in life. When mm. you do first, thing, first time f something, it's not very good. That's first. Second, the market I was addressing, the product is Romania, which is only 18 to 19 million people. And... Um, Third is I try to offer a way to complex program to lose weight when people that usually buy supplements, they look for the magic pill. Yep. So they bought supplements and say, now I have to find, follow a routine and nutrition and do sports four times a week. I cannot do that. Mm. And they basically came up with negative reviews. I took the pills and I didn't lose the weight. And even though I mentioned on the, on the package, this is like an, like an extra for the product. 
So that didn't well, um, go well. Mm. And so you went and pivoted into selling hair products? How, what's the story? How did you, were you bored before or what's the story there? So the story there is that I've been, I've been looking and analyzing the markets a lot because I try to make as much money as possible very fast and at the same time not tie my time with the finances. And then I realized instead of being a big fish in a small pond, being a big e-commerce seller in Romania, I want to be a small fish in a massive pond, which is US, right? So then I started with two of my friends. We watched this course. All three of us started a beard brand that didn't go well. The guy said that basically the Amazon and the e-commerce in US, it's a bubble and I'm not going to succeed. We closed that brand. And then I started with a skincare brand for women, one of the brands that we still have. And um, we just went like that. We launched the product, got destroyed by Chinese competitors, then launched again, got destroyed by Chinese competitors again. In, in America? In America, yeah. Oh, wow. And got destroyed the third time. And the f I launched the same product fourth time on Amazon. And a lot of people said, hey, why did you go to other niches? It's because I literally had to sell, sell my car in order to pay the first batch of inventory. So I ended up with 2,000 units in inventory in US with a listing destroyed on Amazon with negative reviews and eight hundred dollars in my bank account now Damn. yeah and now what do i have to do and i had to start with the same product just punch 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 again and uh fourth time went well got some cash flow and just snowballed into a different product different niche different wait so you had eight hundred dollars in your bank account and you had two thousand products in inventory close to like a thousand eight hundred to two thousand so was that the product that worked or was this so i launched the product was a jade roller right the jade that you do for your face. Yeah. So I launched it first time, got destroyed. The, the same product. Uh -huh. They say I ordered initially 3,000 units and then I sold most of the inventory. Then I reordered from all of the money I had. Then the listing got destroyed. And then I just ended up with having 1,800 units of this specific product, but no listing. So I had to mm -hmm. restart again re with the $800 was basically my marketing budget. Like the PPC rebates, all, all I had to do in order to kickstart the product. Damn. Yeah. So, so you used that $800 to then go ahead and kickstart this yeah. launch again, but in a different way this time. What did you do differently? Was not doing it because back in the day, Amazon platform was so small, not small, was not very well developed in terms of protection that Amazon offers to the sellers. Now you have so many programs that protects your brand and your product. But back in the day, for example, when you order a product from Amazon, it's sold by one seller, right? So let's say I have this jar right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm selling, uh, my, my seller, Tudor, I'm selling this jar, but another competitor can come or a Chinese seller that simply wants to destroy the listing and create uh, another listing under the same, um, uh, another offer under the same listing with another seller name. When the buyer orders this jar, he doesn't know that it's ordering from seller A or seller B. Mm. And they did that intentionally just to destroy your listing. Because mm. like, for example, the top competitor in my niche maybe paid some of the guys in Bangladesh, I don't know, to just hijack, that's the name of the, um, the black hat method, to hijack my listing, destroy it with one star. Because if, for example, I'm selling this jar, right? And it has this hinge here. If the competitor comes and sell the same jar, but he manufactures the product without this hinge, just to give you the one star reviews, just the real customers can come and give you one star reviews, you're just gonna, your product is gonna mm. die. And Amazon won't care. So mm. that happened to me three times. <laughs> That happened to me too. I used to yeah. sell an energy pill on Amazon. Okay. And that li I didn't know that what that happened, but yeah. I just looked sometime and it, my hit listing wasn't there. It yeah, was hijacked. Yeah. It's, it's great. What, what happened back in the day in, on Amazon, it's absolutely crazy what, what was going on. Now the, the, the marketplace is more regulated and they put together more programs in order to protect the sellers and the buyers. But back in the day, it was like wild, wild west. Mm. So... Why did you choose Amazon? Like, we'll get back into more of the story, but why did you choose Amazon? Because you said you wanted to have a business independent of your time. Yeah. So the reason why I choose Amazon is because they made the whole process in putting your products, brands out there so easy. And because Amazon has a high, uh, uh, 
the highest e-commerce trust for customers in the world and they have the highest conversion rate. For example, on one of my products, I have 20 to 25% conversion rate on Amazon. Mm, while, on sh- yeah, while on Shopify, if you have 5%, you're pretty happy mm. with, with uh, an extremely well-optimized landing page, a well-trained pixel, so everything goes well. If you have 5, 5% is pretty good on Shopify. So I started because of that. And as well, all the eyeballs that you have. On, on Shopify, you have to create all these ad sets, all these creatives in order to put in on Facebook and create all these ads. While on Amazon, you have to appear first on the customer search results. So it's more straightforward and easy to run by one person. So if you're one person, you have way more success in doing well on Amazon than, or kickstart your business on Amazon than on Shopify. Even now, would you say that's still true today? Like as we're recording this 2022 that's a very good question i think i think yes because amazon made it very easy to put your products there it's more difficult now to sell on amazon than three years ago you have different challenges so of 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 course other sellers cannot ruin your business like they did with mine three times Mm. but at the same time you have a lot of other challenges how do you get reviews how do you rank the product it's more expensive it's more competitive all these competitors have thousands of reviews which you have to compete against so in that regard it's more difficult but you can still put it off put it off Mm. and it can still go pretty well yeah so so take us back so because the reason i'm asking these questions is because someone maybe is watching and they're thinking oh i want to be like tudor you know i want to have my own brand and you know travel the world you know you're living in bali you know, you're living a great life. So you had $800, which maybe for people watching, that's later like, fuck, I got $800. I want to start a business like him, right? So what, what, what would you, your advice be to them? Like, how did you compete with all these people? Like, the how, advice, how do you do it? So the, I don't know if I was put, because right now I have a pretty decent business, right? So my decisions in terms of business and the decision I have to take and make in order to pass forward are different if I didn't have this business as of now. But I, if I didn't have this, I would start with looking in what's trending in products and actually trying to create a better life for the product for the customers because that's the end goal, right? You have the, all these products and you say, okay, I know how to make this product better in order, f- I know what features to add in order to improve the life of the customer that's going to order and eventually that is going to be shown into the market. So just identify the market that, you like and that you not like that you find the opportunity in and try to improve the life of customers Mm. so you're making you're basically adding more value to your product exactly right try to create a better overall product and Mm. then if you have the possibility patent it Mm. do a patent around it because that's what's going to eventually protect your brand protect your product and as well when you're going to sell the company that's so much more valuable Mm. So is that your plan to sell this company that you have, the Follicle Booster? I mean, I had the opportunity last year uh-huh. because it was this aggregator boom. Everybody was buying and selling and all that stuff. But I will have to see in the coming years. For now, I don't want to sell it. For the next two to three years, because the project is absolutely massive, we can reach nine figures in like two years. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for now, I don't want because I'm extremely passionate about the product. I study hair loss like I used to study nutrition and fitness, like extremely passionate and constant. Uh, for now, no, but probably in five years, mm. we'll say. Yeah, for a nine-figure exit, hell yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> let's see. Yeah, yeah. So, so that'll be cool. That'll be a cool story from like $800 Eight hundred million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. that will be a cool story. But for me, it's not. It's not about money because mm-hmm. I, I got money and I can buy different things: cars, watches, clothes, all that. Is not money is not the number one factor that drives yep. that drives me. It's about the hunt. It's about the passion of creating things and being there and having like. Back in the ten thousand years ago, you always had the hunters that went to hunt because they needed food. Mm. And the hunter that went to hunt just because they like to kill the animal. Mm. All, for example, going to war. There are warriors that need to go to war because their leaders tell them so or someone else. And I'm the guy that goes to war just because he likes to kill. Mm. So for me, it's not about money because I didn't surround myself with any hedonistic 
materials things. Mm. So For you, it's more like the love of the game, just exactly. the process, right? Yeah, I, I love to create. Yeah. I love when I, I take my brain out and I take this product, think for a month, work with our suppliers in order to create a, a better version of the product, launch it to the market, market it to, to our audience, and they all message us. I've been using this product from this brand for the past three years, and when I tested you yours, it's a game changer. When I see that, it's more satisfying for me than a Lamborghini or whatever. Mm. Because that's what, uh, why I'm working for. That's mm. like a, my special small talent that I've been gifted on. Yeah, yeah. It's that, that impact. Exactly. Like you're creating something of value and exactly. you're getting compensated for that. Exactly. Yeah. Because like all the evolutions in life goes incremental, right? You make a small adjustment, small adjustment, small in, in all niches. You make a small adjustment. So all the, these adjustments, the main objective is to improve the life of the customer and improve the life of the end user. So if you can improve this jar just by a bit so the customers don't have this issue anymore, you just made an improvement. It's massive. Yeah. So, so what you're selling is unique though, right? So it's a huge market. That's a huge problem that you're solving. Yeah. But it's, it's very unique in, in the sense that, for example, let's say you're, you used this as an example earlier. How would you make a product like this unique? Like this is a mason jar. It's standard. Exactly. So a product like this, unique, what I would do, I will take the top five products on Amazon that are selling the most. I will read all the negative reviews to see what are the main pain points that the customer encounter with this product. I will create the Google sheet with top 10 main issues with it. I don't know, like the cap, the, um, some other shapes, something like that. And I will try to solve that problem. That's how I would do it. It depends on the niche as well. It depends mm -hmm. a lot on the niche because what we've done with the hair loss industry and the recipe, we literally revolutionized the market that's been out for 25 years. And we in terms of recipe and quality of the product, we, beat, we are beating companies that are selling for hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Mm. And they have been selling this product for like 25 years. Mm. So, but it depends a lot, a lot on the product. There are products that you cannot innovate that much because there's so much innovation you can do on a mason jar. But there are products in which you can innovate as long as you can, phones or apps or... Mm. I like that tip that you just gave, like, because I've heard this before, of like going to the, the one-star reviews. Yeah, one to three stars, negative ones. One to three stars. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, the negative ones, yeah, it's yeah. important. To, and then to say, like, for, see what's, what they're saying. Exactly. And see if there's correlations between exactly. what they're saying, right? And see if it's correlations in the top five products and if you can find some common issues and pain points from all these products and you come up with the solution to that. If you do that, it's good. You mm. got the market, you got the niche. Yeah, yeah, because you got something unique that yeah, other exactly. people don't have. You got the solution to the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's eventually going to be seen on the market because customers are going to read uh, what's going on there. And if, for example, if this one breaks, so let's say the hinge here breaks to all of your top five competitors, you do something different on a hinge just to make sure that enforced. If this hinge is going to break, we're going to refund you 100% refund you of the product. It's 100% secure. So if you manage to put that, to create that product, to secure it, to create that feature that customers can trust it's not going to happen to them and you can offer a guarantee around that so you tell them hey if these problems happen with our product we're going to give you all of our money back no question no question asks mm. it's going to be a winning product so it's like adding in the customer service like having good customer service is also like a, a winning of course USP. of course having a very good customer service is extremely important but it depends on the product because Again, if you have a mason jar, you don't need so much customer service. But if you have a hair loss company, then you need a lot of customer service because how you lose your hair, which areas, what age are you? It's a lot, so many questions and so many things that the customers will eventually ask you that you need to have a very well-prepared customer service team. Mm. So why did you pick the hair loss? That's a super good question because I didn't have any beer when I was 18 17, really? 18, 19, 20, zero beard. And I said, okay, I need to have a beard. I went to the gym. I was extremely skinny, 1 meter 95 and 67 kilos. Damn. I was... Phew, and like now you're like 100... Was your, how much are you that? 105. 105 kg? But now I'm just barely training. I'm, I'm still training, but I'm not like into so much like I used to be. I w used to be 117. Damn. And, and no fat. Like wow. Beefy. So... 
Then I went to the gym and I said, okay, I need to get a beard. I started to use my Noxidil on my beard. But the problem that I always had is that because of the recipe, I always had irritation and red skin from it. I use it on my beard. I went with the red skin for like two years. I got the beard and then I use it on my scalp because I started to lose my scalp hair. Mm. Because of the DHT conversion. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, here. Oh, oh, in the middle. My crown, my everything started to lose. And then I applied on my scalp. I had dandruff irritation for many years. I've tested all of the product recipes. I've tested Kirkland, Rogaine, Head and Shoulders, Vichy, all of them. And I, with all of them, I had the same issues because they didn't revolutionize on the recipe. And then I said, okay, let me try to change this. And for the past one year and a half, I've been, we've been testing, I've been testing different recipes, like probably 30, 40, 50 recipes, something like that. We tried with water, oil, alcohol, take in, out a lot of ingredients, changing the metabolization process, the production process with our factory, extremely complicated stuff in order just to make sure that we keep the benefits, the growth benefits. Uh, Minoxidil is the only, it's one of the only FDA approved drugs. Finasteride is the second, which I am completely against. And What's the second one? Finasteride. Finasteride. Finasteride is like an orally pill that you take, but it's high risk with hormonal like impotency, uh -huh. erectile dysfunction. Uh -huh. It's risky. Right. And for me, I don't know about anyone else, but for me, it's more important my hormonal levels than some hair on my scalp. Mm. And then I, I realized that all these other brands I've been using, they all manufacture in Israel in the same production plant. So what they do they is the exact same recipe, the exact same process. They just do white label. They put a foil mm. around and they ship it to the market. And I said, okay, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure I can do a better job. And I found a supplier in China that has a fantastic R&D department together with me. We started to work like very, very geeky into the, into the sub, like taking from, from where we're going to purchase the Minox deal, which form is going to come, uh, how the whole process is going to go, what ingredients we take out, what ingredients we put in, what kind of percentages, what temperatures do we prepare the product, how we store it. It's we work for like a year and a half only on the recipe, only on the liquid. So, Wow, so you've been doing a lot of research into like the perfect formula yep. to make the hair grow. Essentially, using minoxidil. The perfect, the perfect formula to reduce the skin related. Because on, on minoxidil, when you apply minoxidil, you have two types of side effects. You have the skin related side effects, which drive from the formulation, mm. and you have the minoxidil side effects, which is increased heart heartbeat, weight gain in some cases, headache. But these percentages are very small, like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 in increased heartbeat, which is the highest of the side effects. And then you have the skin-related side effect, which is dandruff, irritation, itchiness. And those, the skin-related side effects, we try to solve. So we tr with the recipe, we try to keep all the benefits and all the growth, and at the same time, reduce the side effects as much as possible in percentage. And we have 97% reduced side effects, skin-related side effects, compared to the other competitors. So it sounds like that's the main problem that you've been solving because my natural deal has been there for a long time. For right? a long time, unpatent, yes. And everyone knows that it helps you grow the hair, but yep. it has the side effects, has a lot of side effects. Has a lot of skin related side effects. Right. So if anyone has used minoxidil, minoxidil in the past, Kirkland, Rogaine, all these brands, and you applied, you maybe like itchiness, some kind of dandruff. Some, if you don't have it, that's perfectly nice and perfectly fine. But if you have it, we solve that we solved a, a very high percentage of that, 97% better than Kirkland. So since you've formulated this for your, for your own self, so you sold your own problem first. I sold my own problem. And then and you said, hey, I'm going to open this up as a business. It's Is it like that? Is, I didn't solve, by extension, I solved my problem, but I didn't aim for my own problem because uh -huh. I said, I have this issue, the skin-related issues. I started to research it, geek out on it, and I realized that I'm not the only one. And then I came to the conclusion, if this medicine is available for anyone to produce for the past 25 years, and th at the same time, all of the main competitors are manufacturing the same power plant in Israel with the exact same recipe, 
for sure I can do something different for sure and that's like that's where I try to to come mm. in at the moment with the data that we have that I have with the results I cannot say if it's better than Kirkland and Rogaine in terms of results but at the same time what I believe for example on supplements if you take a supplement and your stomach is don't like it it starts to hurt for sure that supplement is not going to be positively affecting your body in such a way as if you would take a supplement and don't have any problems with it and your body just likes it and the same with the hair growth if you apply it and you have redness itchiness automatically your body is something it doesn't like on that recipe it's the same with the supplements right so mm -hmm. i think in terms of results we might have a better but i don't have the exact data so i cannot make any claim mm. Yeah, that's very transparent and honest because the most people in your space are like, yeah, we're the best. You know? No, that's BS. <laughs> so even on our YouTube channel and the, the hair loss course that I'm preparing in Birgord, I'm not, I, I really try to be as transparent as possible because most of the, so if you have a hair transplant clinic, your main objective is to make people to come to do hair transplants, right? So for me, it's always like I try to be as transparent and honest as possible. It's true that Androgenic alopecia is around 70 to 80 percent of men will suffer from some kind of androgenic alopecia by their 40. And the vast majority of these men will be able to treat it. And by using and applying these medicines and these treatments, you can prolong your hair for as long as possible and postpone hair transplant for as, mo as long as you can. But at the same time, have you seen like the guys that are 20 and already bald? Mm. There's nothing you can do there. I mean, that's your genes. You have extremely aggressive DHT transformation from testosterone because testosterone transforms to dihydrotestosterone at age 20 to 25, usually, depends on the genes. But if you have a very aggressive transition and transformation, it, you cannot do much. So, so then not even hair transplant is going to save you. You need to take a lot of finasteride, but then you risk in all the hormonal problems. I, I'm, I'm massively against finasteride. I mean, I know there are a lot of... Uh, have you heard about finasteride? I've never heard of it. So finasteride as well was invented by Merck and it reduces your DHT level. But the problem is that it's an ingestible pill and it reduces your DHT level on your entire body. You have a lot of benefits from the DHT, such as like chest hair, beard, deep voice, a lot of benefits that men have from that. And the side effect is that in, on the hormonal part, if you play with your hormonal levels you risk destabilizing something, some other hormones like testosterone or your testes or whatever it can happen. It's, it's pretty high in that, in that regard. And for finasteride, you need, your D, you need to reduce your DHT levels only on your scalp, not your entire body. The only area that you want your DHT to be reduced as a man is your scalp. That's it. You don't need to have reduced it on your beard. You don't need anywhere else, just scalp. So... Mm. So, so if someone is, well, you said when you were eighteen, you didn't have a beard at all. Right? I can send you photos, man. I was blank. But, but that wasn't a genetic issue, because if you're twenty and you're bald, that's a genetic problem. Yes, right. Yes. But if you don't have a beard, because there's some guys out there that haven't had a beard and they're forty years old and they've never been able to grow a beard. So is that genetic or is that can they buy your product? And Gen then of course, genetics can play an important role. Yeah. But. In order for you to have a... So when you have your beard, right? Your dark hair growth. Yep. That means your follicles and your hair shaft is matured. Mm. Meaning it developed in such a way that keratin make the hair longer and thicker. So the follicle and overall hair shaft is maturized. When you're young, you don't have that maturity. You have that small puff, you, uh, white flakes. Yep. So then what happens if you apply, when you want to increase your beard growth and your beard thickness and the hair color and hair maturity, you have to increase the nourishment with the blood flow, which what minoxidil does, you apply it and increases the blood flow. So your hair follicles will receive more and more nutrients and in time it's going to get more maturized. And at the same time, you have to improve the nourishment, meaning biotin and uh, niacinamide, glycerin, other nourishment ingredients with, which help with the nourishment of the follicle. Mm. So, so that's like the basic. But if you don't have any follicles on your beard, so if you go to like check the mirror and basically you have no white flakes, because that can happen in like 2 or 3% of all male, they have that problem, no follicles. Then 
it's not much you can do. Hair transplant. You can do hair transplant on your beard, my friend. You can do that? Yeah, of course. They do it on eyebrows, armpits. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Wow. The hair transplant industry is bonkers. Yeah, because I have a few friends who have had hair transplants and they've gone to Turkey or, you know, Thailand, yeah, yeah, yeah. got hair transplants. It's like $10,000, right? And it's it, crazy. And, yeah. and so what do you, what, what's your thoughts on hair transplants? I'm not against it. Yep. I want to make very, very clear. I'm not against hair, hair transplant, but I'm against telling customers that you cannot do anything in order to maintain your hair. Mm. So you can do a lot of things that you can postpone hair transplant for as long as possible. I will send you photos. I will sh uh, um, show you that one year and a half ago when I was testing recipe, I was bald. I was 70% bald. Like now you see I'm full hair. I will send you photos. No yeah, I, I, I will send you photos. I'll, I'll put it on the on yeah. the edit on this podcast. Yeah. I will send you photos uh, when I was 26, last year when I tested the products, and now. Damn. So, yeah, so you can still do a lot of things. So the transformation has just been because of you applying your products to yeah. your head. Exactly. Topically. Exactly. And I want to add another thing. If you do a hair transplant you still have to do minoxidil and DHT blockers because what's a hair transplant? They come into your back, they extract the follicles, they put it into your scalp, but then what happens? If your DHT level is still high on the scalp level and the blood nourishment, it's not there, the, fo the, the other hair follicle is still going to die. That's why you see a lot of guys that have been to second, third, fourth hair transplant and they still have hair loss. Mm. Because you're putting, you're not solving the problem. Mm. It's like putting another, you, you have four t-shirts, you wear it, you put it down, but then you take it again without washing it. You don't solve the, the problem that's in, in the skull, like reducing the DHT and increasing the blood flow, increasing the nourishment, which that has to be taken care of. And at the same time, if you cannot treat it with... So f in order to reduce DHT, there are multiple things that you can do. But if you have a hair transplant, the vast majority of clinics are going to give you finasteride. All of them. Most, like all of them that I've heard, after that, after six months, you've finalized your hair transplant, you have to take finasteride to reduce the DHT. And then you run into the same problems with the, with the hormonal problems. The vast majority of customers, of users, are not going to have problems with finasteride. But at the same time, will you be able to risk it? I won't. So it's risky. What's the biggest risk again? Reduce sperm count, That's erectile right. dysfunctions. Right, right, right. So as you know, for, for fitness, yep. like all your hormonal balances and all your hormonal states in your body are tied together. Mm. When you play with something, something changes. When your insulin is up, your, age, uh, your human, human growth hormone is down. When mm -hmm. your human growth is up, insulin is down. That's why after you finish workout, you shouldn't drink sweets, right? Because you want to keep the HDH as high as possible so you keep the, metaboliz the metabolism running for as long as possible mm. yeah so so basically what they're doing it makes sense though when i think about the industry the hair transplant industry it's like hey we just give you a hair transplant six months take for i can't even say it but what's it called finasteride finasteride yeah and then oh in six months i have to go back because uh i need to go another second second uh, hair transplant yeah. so though i understand their business i wouldn't be able to do a hair transplant because i'm like I do subscribe, high ticket subscribe and save by lying. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's fishy. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not against it. You should do it if you don't have any hair, but you just keep in mind that you should use some medicines after that if you want to keep it. Or otherwise, you're just going to pay 10K every other year. Mm. And it's only because I, I, I explained to you, you need to extract the follicles beneath, behind your head on the, on the back part. And because of that, it's only so many follicles you can take from their interior. The, that area is going to be bald. And then you're going to be 45, <laughs> and you're going to be bald here and bald here. <laughs> 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 then what you're going to do? Like, you have other areas you can extract follicles from, but I don't think that's around. Like yeah. So I think I learned something. So the secret is to rejuvenate the health of the hair follicle. And that's what the hair transplant... Uh, so on hair, on scalp, you have two objectives as a man. Reduce the DHT, That's right. which DHT, dihydrotestosterone, acts as a blockade beneath the scalp. So as, as a blockade, so the capillary, because on, on your scalp, you don't have any veins, you have capillaries. And those hair follicles receive nutrients 
from these small capillaries, right? The DHT is like a blockade that squeeze those veins in and they don't push enough blood to the hair follicle. And you have to increase the blood flow. So when you reduce the DHT, you have to increase the blood flow so you make sure as much blood and as much nutrients go into this hair follicle so it keeps it rejuvenated. Ah, okay. And then that will solve the hair problem, which is what you exactly. did. Exactly. Now your hair's grown back. Exactly. So on, on the blood flow, minoxidil is the best out there, no doubts. Yeah. And on the DHT, here's the problem Well, I, I will try to revolutionize the whole market. There is no medicine in the world now that you can apply as a topical, topical, because you don't need to reduce the DHT level on your entire body. You just need to do it on your scalp. Mm. That works, and you can apply it on your scalp. So you just combine minoxidil with that topical, and you basically reduce the DHT and improve the blood flow at the same time. And when you do that, you basically make the whole hair transplant industry obsolete. And that's mm. what I will do. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, so revolutionizing the whole industry. That's, yeah. that's more than nine figures. Because there's a huge... How many... How, how big is the industry, like, financially? Just my deal, it's 1.4 billion. Hmm. Uh, and it's growing massively and fast because uh, with all the problems in the world, higher stress, higher hair loss, everyone wants to keep their hair on their scalp. Hmm. So just my deal is around 1.4, 1.5 billion, and it's growing every year by 6 to 8%, just my deal. Hmm. But if somehow you come up with a medicine that destroys that DHT sediments beneath your scalp and you can patent that it's mm. just it's it's huge just imagine how many people like just listening to this podcast have problem with hair growth or women with hair thinning hair thinning mm -hmm. because after your pregnancy or if you're stressed or something you have hair thinning you need to do something in order to regain that thickness of the hair for women as well yeah why does that happen hair thinning for women, it's hormonal imbalance. So if they go to a stressful period in their lives or post-pregnancy, they have that hair thinning. But because they don't have DHT, the DHT is the only problem. Because they don't have testosterone, they have very low testosterone, meaning much lower quantities of dihydrotestosterone are being converted. Mm -hmm. Then it, they don't have any sediments beneath their scalp. That's why they don't have hair loss. They have hair thinning. But usually, it's more easier to treat and more easier to regain your hair thickness than men. Mm, I see. Okay. So they need they also need do you have products for women too? Yes we do. Minoxidil can be used at two percent minoxidil, two percent concentration for women as well. Okay. We're we're looking to create other recipes with ketoconazole shampoos and all that, but as I mentioned it took us it took me one point five years to create the perfect recipe. So I'm not in a rush. I'm not I don't want to do all the products by next year. I wanna have them because as fast as I go, as shittier the recipes will, are going to be. So when I launch mm. a product, when I promote a product, I want it to be the best. Mm. So it doesn't matter if it takes me one year or three years to create the best shampoo in the world. But when I do it, it's the best. Mm. And why do you think no one solved this problem that you're talking about with the THT and the minoxidil deal combined? Because there is no medicine in the world as of now that reduces, destroys DHT on the skull. Because if finasteride, minoxidil used to be an oral drug. Then they convert it to a topical lotion. Finasteride, they try to convert it to a topical lotion, but the problem with finasteride is that it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of recipe you are going to do, it's not going to be metabolized by your scalp. Because it's a medicine it's, and it's not a natural ingredient, your body has to metabolize it in order to produce the benefits. Same with minoxidil. It has, right. with, the, with the help of the sulfate, it has to metabolize it, so the increase of the blood flow will happen. That's why some customers don't have results from minoxidil, because their liver doesn't produce enough sulfate. And because of that, the metabolization process on the scalp doesn't happen. Mm. And I try to do some recipes here where I try to add sulfate to minoxidil in order to help with that metabolization, but we'll see how the body is going to react. And at the same time, for um, for the minoxidil, it's um, for the medicines for finasteride. If you don't have that metabolization process on the medication, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to apply. Your body is not going to recognize it, and it's going to flush it out of the system. Mm. Okay, so it's so it sounds like it's actually safer to just put use it topically than orally. 
A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's more safe. It's local. It, some percentage of that is going to end up in your bloodstream as well, but the quantity is incomparable smaller than ingestible pills. Mm. Okay. So let's let's. I'm curious more about the business side. Okay. So because you're talking so openly, right? Because yeah. you know all the guys in ecom. You ask them what business they got. They're like, no, nah, I'm not telling you. Like yeah. you know, you know how it goes. I mean, good luck trying to copy the recipe. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Because as you're talking, it seems like because you've done so much research, it's you know how difficult it is to copy you. I Therefore, mean, you're like, no one's going to do this. 98%, 99% of all the e-commerce business owners will not even have the money to invest in a project like this. Mm. Because just to launch the product, it cost me $80,000 in lawyer fees just for really? Amazon. Just for Amazon to say, you're good to go. Because really? you had to go to the factory, FDA certificates, Analysis of the factories, take it to FDA, approve it. So it's a very long process. You cannot sell minoxidil. Everyone like can go and sell an over-the-counter drug on Amazon. So wow. just, just buy that. It's, it's yeah. and then you have to put in the productions. Yeah. Which you, if you invested eighty thousand dollars in lawyer fees, you cannot invest ten thousand dollars to do the production. <laughs> true, and true. then the marketing. Yeah. And then you add it all up, and there's your Aventador. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Can you take us through the journey then? So, because I'm just curious, man. So, you just mentioned you paid 80 grand in lawyer fees. So, first of all, that is showing your determination and your commitment to this. Like, you know it's going to yeah. work. Like, to pay 80 grand just in lawyer fees, you know that this is going to be a home run. So, when I paid 80,000, 80, I didn't even have the recipe. Mm. I was still wow. working on the recipe. I actually launched a product, I launched it on Amazon without having the perfect recipe. Because I, ha I wanted to have it there. I wanted to find a solution without alcohol, oil base, water base. That didn't work because alcohol is extremely important to combine the product, to dry the skin out. So as fast as the, the, the um, lotion dries into your scalp, as fast your scalp is going to receive the medication. So if you put oil, it's not going to be absorbed by your scalp. By extension, it's not going to have the metabolization and the benefits. So... But I, I wanted to create the perfect, I knew that I can create it, uh, for sure. I was like, a hundred, it's, it's impossible. I know these billion dollar companies didn't do it, but I'm smarter than them, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's that conviction in yourself, the confidence, yeah, exactly. the trust in yourself. Yeah. yeah. And so from, so from $800, how did you grow it? Because I'm thinking as, as you're talking, I'm like, yeah. oh, this could be like how to grow from $800 to millions yep. and millions. So here's the thing, like, uh, as, as I said, mentioned about the smart group, because it's not like only e-commerce. Yes. So the reason why I started to do services, ranking on, them, on Amazon, creating listings, copyrights, managing other Shopify seller Amazon accounts, all these other service businesses is because I literally have zero money and I realize if I want to scale this business, I need to find some other revenue streams that are going to let me have that money inside a business so I can reinvest, so I can scale it up as a snowball, right? Because if I needed to take the money out just to fund my lifestyle, I wouldn't grow as fast as I did. Mm. And then I started a ranking business with a good friend of mine. Well, we, we run that business and basically funded my lifestyle through all the service businesses that I'm doing. And even as of now, I never took out money of the, of the main business, of any of the e-commerce brands. And we have supplements, we have skincare, we have hair loss, we have beard styling. We have many different categories, but never took out money out of the e-commerce. Mm, because, because you already... So, yeah, so you already secured your lifestyle money through other ventures. Yeah, uh, and as I mentioned, I'm not a hedonistic person. I don't care about cars, watches, all that. My lifestyle is extremely modest, basic. I, yep. I, I want to have high-quality food, be able to go to train, treat my wife well, and be able to go to nice dinners and nice vacations. I don't need cars, watches, clothes, apartments, houses, I don't care about all this stuff. So for me, it's like pretty basic and it's not, an, it's not an expensive lifestyle. And even when I'm going to be a billionaire, I'm still going to have the same lifestyle. Mm. Yeah. You said something there. You said when I'm going to be a billionaire. So let's talk about that because I had one of my friends, he's um, a very successful trader and I think he's going to be a billionaire and I asked him, do you want to be a billionaire? He never, he never thought about that question, right? Okay. So, so do you, is that one of your goals to be a billionaire in your lifetime? It's not necessarily one of my goals i know for sure that i'm going to end up extremely rich yep 
because my mindset of reinvesting and creating a better overall world through products and services, that's going to end up with, mm -hmm. like good networking, all that. But at the same time, it's not like an objective. For me, the objective is take my small talent that I can run businesses and create products and services that improve life of other humans. Mm. That's my objective. After I finish with hair loss and cure hair loss and create this unique recipe that's going to be revolutionize the whole industry, then I will go to the next monster, the next mountain. Mm. And is that the next mountain for you? I know it's like far out there, but is that because you'll just observe a problem in the market or would it be a personal problem that you have which will drive you to that market? If that makes sense. I cannot, I cannot believe in a product if I don't use it. Mm. So if I don't use the product constantly and I don't love it, and if I don't believe that the improvements we've done are truly revolutionary, I cannot believe in it. And by extension, if I don't believe in it, I cannot work 16 hours a day on the product, on the team, on the business. Mm. Yeah, so you have to put your passion into it. Because that's another thing, right? Like this, uh, do what you're passionate about. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I, my, I for my first product was skincare. I never even used the. I used the product when I first got it once. But <laughs> after that, <laughs> now even now, the only product I'm using is this one. Mm. I have fifty products, probably sixty products. I never use any of them. So of course, there will be products that. I'm a business person by the end of the day. I'm an entrepreneur. I try to create a better product, but that doesn't mean I have to use all of them. Mm. I'm just saying that in order for me to be extremely passionate and dedicated in, in, in a direction on a product, I have to use that product constantly. Mm. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good tip for people because some people think that they, they should just you know, solve a problem that they don't care about because it makes money. But then they're, they're, that's being driven by money. You're not driven by money. You're driven by providing a real solution to a problem uh, yes at the beginning i was driven by money yeah because like when you come from romania the average salary there is 400 bucks bro when i was wow. doing personal training i was doing two thousand dollars a month and i was very well paid for romania so of course when you come up from that environment you want to have some money and it's great to have it for to fund your lifestyle mm -hmm. but that shouldn't be the only purpose of it yeah, so you've got you got your lifestyle covered by doing the ranking businesses and other businesses, yep. services. Mostly services, right? Service-based yep. businesses. We have e-commerce and services at the same time. So the yeah. service businesses, I mean, I don't spend everything I'm making on the service businesses. Uh, some of them I'm reinvesting it back into the business, but I'm funding my lifestyle from the, from the services. Mm. Yeah, so that's good advice to someone watching is because if they're looking to do what you did and start – you know, their hair follicle, whatever it is for them, their big brand, they should focus on getting their lifestyle sorted out first. For sure. Because otherwise they're going to just use the money from the business to fund their lifestyle, yep. which would then mean their business is not going to grow because exactly. they don't have any money to invest. Yep, 100%. Reinvest. And for me being a Romanian, because we have such a slow salary, all the Romanians are making money through so many different methods. Mm. Like, they're doing the plumbing, they're doing the house renovations, they're working on the, as a postman, they're basically every single one is doing so many things at the same time to generate money. Mm. And I took that habit with me. It doesn't matter how much money I'm making or how many business, I'm still, if, if I find a good business, psh, I'm going to it. I just found a new business like last week. I went to Ubu to find a programmer and we're starting it. In February, we're going to have the new, March, we're going to have a new business. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting because, you know, uh, my men one of my friends, he's kind of like my mentor, I guess. I, I have a lot of mentors, but he said, he who tries to catch two rabbits catches none. So he's, he, his whole thing is like, just focus on one thing. I agree and disagree. Okay. Because in business, f how it works for me. I need, to, for uh, me personally, I have to get the know-how. I get the know-how and then I create the system mm. and then I find competent people that can help me run that system and then I have to do weekly meetings and just watch reports in order for me to know how the businesses are going. For It's true when I'm going to scale super big with the Minoxidil, maybe other projects are going to fall behind simply because 
depends on the magnitude of the project. But not every single time your project is going to be 10 out of 10 potential. Maybe you have a seven, but you still have to make money out of it. Mm. So, Right, so you're, you have a skill set there of leadership then, because it's like you identify... For sure, you must have that. Yeah. It's impossible to create a good business if you're not a, a good leader and you cannot hire competent and great people that can run a system smoothly, nicely, without you requiring be there on the operational side every single day. Mm. So you cannot yeah. do that. I mean, if you're bad at hiring and you don't know how to create the system in order to run itself, a business is like a machine. Every single employee or colleague is going to be like the small small piece that's all moving together, right? And you have to just go and check the machine if it's running perfectly, check the reports, check all that. There's a saying, if you, if right now you have been teleported to an island and once a week you need to see only one piece of paper with data points, you will know if the business is run well or not. If the answer is no, your business is not optimized. So you mean if there's no data points? So if you're teleported to an island, yes. no internet, no phone, no laptop, nothing, and once a week you receive one piece of paper with some main data points, revenue, profit, advertise, whatever, main, main data points, do you know your business is run well or not? Do you know it's increasing, decreasing, what's the problem in your business or not? And if the reply is no, you don't know because you know, need more data, then your business is not optimized. So your business needs to be summarized in a few sentences for you to understand. Otherwise, you cannot run four or five businesses at the same time. You have to be 100% into one. Mm. So adding to that, what, what are the, the KPIs that would need to be on that sheet of paper? It depends on the business to business, right? For example, on e-commerce, we have our main products, we have revenues, we have profit share, we have advertising costs, we have advertising channels, we have production time, stocks, estimated of products. So you have different data points from business to business. Mm. How did you learn that, all that stuff? Was that just on the, on the job as you were doing it or did you learn uh, it before you went into So I read the personal MBA book, which okay. is extremely good. This personal MBA, very good. I highly recommend it. I read Traction, which is a system that you need to operate on so you put your business together. And then just friends, networking, mm. meeting like-minded people that are 40 and already did it in life, mm. did the businesses and suggestions, advices, being humble and not arrogant that I know them all <laughs> and uh, just rolling out as it is. Yeah. yeah. What, what keeps you going then? What keeps you motivated on, in this business journey? So as you achieve a certain level of financial success, you have two options. Hedonism, which most of the parts in the hedonism are a black hole, cars, clothes, wash watches, women, it's just a black hole. There's always a better car, a better watch you can buy. Or life purpose. For me, the life purpose is I want to take my small talent that I have been gifted on to look at a certain thing and be certain that I can do it better. Doesn't in doesn't matter what anyone else is telling me. I know for sure I can do it better and just improve life of others. And this is just like the short term and the long term. I don't know. I, have you seen the movie Forrest Gump? Uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember it though. I just never remember that scene. The, run, yeah, Forrest, run. Yeah. <laughs> at the end, he said... Is God destined me for something great or are we drifting randomly in the wind? Or maybe it's both at the same time. And I think like maybe it's both at the same time and until God finds a direct purpose for me to help in, in his cause, I'm just going to help with my talent and just improve incrementally small niches. Mm. And what, what is your talent? What would you say is your number one skill, like talent? Number one. Yeah. What, you be what are you the best in the world at? Best in the world. That's, I, I don't know, there are 7.5 billion people <laughs> here. I haven't seen all of them. <laughs> but I'm pretty good at, at leadership, yep. motivating people. I'm pretty good at um, creating the products and taking an idea, product, service, improving it and monetizing it. Mm. I'm pretty good at that. 
I know how to get people fire, fired up. Mm. Yeah, that's, that leadership skill is, um, that's like the most important one. Yeah. And is, I'm not motivated by money. That's the thing because a lot of people have money and they just don't share any of the, that money with their colleagues and they just like me, 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 all me. Mm. And uh, that just keeps hot talent away from you. Mm. Add, adding to that though, so the talent is interesting, right? So what I've learned about talent is the, the best talent doesn't always want to be compensated that well but they want to they join a big vision. Like, for example, you said nine of figures, course. right? So that's a big vision that's very complicated and it's going to challenge them and they're going to get recognition. So that's a motivator for them, more, the, more so than the money. Is that what you've found as well with the really good talent? Depends. Depends their age. Mm -hmm. Depends if they have kids. Yep. Depends on a lot of things. Mm. But I think financial is extremely important for everyone. And you as a business owner, you have to do everything possible to make sure that your colleagues and your team members are satisfied with the financial incentives of your business. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to look somewhere else because truth being told, if he's a good person, hardworking, smart, he can find job anywhere. Mm. So financial has to be taken care of. And then, of course, you have to sell the vision. Most people, they don't think in money. They don't think in financial. We have... Colleagues that are women, they don't care about that financial part that much. They don't care about the nine figures. Guys, they do. Women, they don't. What they care about is when you're going to re ha be nine figure, I will, be st I will still be able to stay home, work from home, take care of my kids and do the job, yes or no? Yes. Mm. Perfect. Optimizing for security, right? Women, women want the of security. Of course, of course. And that's, yeah. like, that's the how we first want these ladies yes. because they are super smart extremely capable and i told them like hey you're never you never have to dress up go to an office if you work for us with us you can stay home take care of your kid flexible program you have responsibilities and you have to bring value of course but at the same time you have a lot of benefits you can stay home with your kid and raise it up mm. you don't have to leave your kid with the grandparents or mm. And I think that's a huge motivator for, for a woman that has one or two kids. Yeah. So, so as you're talking, you're, you're saying what you did, you studied for one and a half years, refining this process, getting the right formula. Mm -hmm. And so is, you, is your mindset like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into this space, this market, I'm going to solve this problem by getting this custom formula, make the product better. And now I need to build a massive team of amazing people around me. So when I met you, you said you worked two hours a day, right? Like on the, on the business operational like operation part. operational yeah. part. Okay, I work two hours operational. Okay, so in terms of like day to day tasks that I have to do operational reading reports, checking metrics, colleagues, all that two hours. But I work all day all, all the time. I'm working now. I'm on the podcast. I go home. I work. I go in out. I work. I always work. It's not about like I drink pina coladas on the beach. I will never do that. <laughs> I don't care. But like I yeah. always work. When I go to the gym, I work. When I go to boxing, I work. Where I go out and network, I, w uh, I work as well. So for me, it's all about like working. But in terms of like what I do operationally, it's like two hours a day because all my business setups and structures are very well put in place. Mm. And did you put those systems in place or is there another guy doing no, that? Yeah. For you. Yeah, okay. you read the traction book, you read one chapter, because the book is made on chapters, you read one chapter, you implement it into your business, you read the second chapter, you implement it third, implement it fourth, implement it, and then you do the same for the second business, third business, fourth business, fifth business. Do you think your personalities uh, gravitate towards that because that's how you are? Like you're, it sounds like you're very mechanical. I'm not mechanical, I'm, inf I'm efficient. Uh -huh. So, I'm... I'm, I, I like to simplify things in life, and I will tell you why. My life philosophy is the following. In life, you have six jars. Health, family and close friends, financial, spiritual, intellectually, and socially. You have to fill them in with sand, and you have to fill them in equally. Because nothing matters in the world if you don't have the health. Nothing matters in the world if nobody loves you. So you have to fill them all equally. And if you take any of these jars and dissect them, you see that the massive industries that have been built behind this, spiritual, for example, how many things you can do spiritual in books and all that read. You can literally occupy your entire life with that. 
But if you want to fill them, them all in, you have to be extremely efficient and simplify all these jars as much as possible. If I don't create a good system and if I don't create a good business setup that will allow me to work operationally two hours a day, how I will be able to have a healthy relationship with my wife and spend time with her when I'm working 16 hours a day. So how I can go to the gym and take care of myself and work out and eat nutritious foods when I work all day is not healthy. So I have to s s create th all the systems. Are try I try everything I do. I try to be as specific and as simple as possible. Even when I go to the gym, 45 minutes, I'm out. I don't stay. I, don't, I do my warm-up, stretching, do all things. Bye. I don't stay two hours, three hours in train. It's too much time. I waste too much time for that. Mm. So you're constantly thinking about these er different areas of life and making sure you're putting enough time in each, yeah. each I bucket. I used to do it every year, but yeah. now I do every quarter. I just go with myself one hour and just analyze, okay, how my life's been in the past three months, which areas I improved the most and which one are have been neglected the most. And if, for example, it's the spiritual part or if it's the social part, I start to put more energy into that part. I put more tasks that I have to do during the week for that specific regard. For example, on the spiritual part, I have to do the prayings at night and afternoon. And I have to learn other, I'm, I'm a Christian, I have to learn other prayings and different prayings in order to put more sand in that jar. Mm. That's nice. So that's, that's healthy to do that because now you're, you're re reassessing your, your life on a regular basis. You have to. To improve every year. So it's you like you do with the fitness. Yep. You start work, but if you never take off your shirt, you will never know how you improved. So from <laughs> now true. again, exactly. From now and again, you have to check the mirror. Okay, how's my back doing? How's my chest? How's my arms? How's my triceps, biceps? Okay, I need to improve my chest. Perfect. What do I do? I do, I improve with this training during the week. I do the chest in order to try these exercises. Mm. So it's the same thing with these six jars. Mm. Do you think you would you do anything in the uh, fitness space, or maybe you are? I don't, I'm not sure if you supplement in that space. I have uh, gummies supplements, which is not like fitness. And I have we start right now. We want to start a carnivore supplement mm. made from beef organs and yep. all that stuff. Yep. But we have to analyze. It's not done yet, but we have to analyze the market. Yeah. But in terms of like fitness, what in what regard? Like yeah, the, just yeah. Like you get uh, you answered the question. So anything to do with business in that space, yeah. So you're selling supplements. I will always be an athlete. Mm. I used to do sports ever since I was two years old. I did tennis professionally. I did swimming, volleyball, gym, boxing. I the only time I had seven days without sports, without going to a gym or a place for sports, is during quarantine in Jakarta a year and some ago. But every. Even then, my wife said, please leave me alone. You're horrible. Do push-ups, <laughs> do anything. I c because I'm hyperactive. I, can, I wake up at 4 a.m., I go to sleep at 10 p.m., and I always work. I'm hyper hyperactive. If you put me in a room, I, it's, after two hours, it's like, let's do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I cannot watch a movie. If, if the movie is not exceptionally well done and an OG movie, like Forrest Gump, if you put me to the Netflix series, I have not seen a series for seven or eight years. I cannot, like, go, next. Mm. You get easily bored. Because your mind's constantly always going. Yeah, bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> I always think about, like, four <laughs> things at the same time. <laughs> well, that's, that's how you're solving these huge problems, right? Because yeah. your mind is, it needs a big challenge. I mean, you cannot have so many businesses at the same time if your mind doesn't race off. Mm. Yeah, because when you start a business, you're thinking about how you can systematize it. Like you mentioned last exactly. week, you started one. You're like, exactly. all right, who's the guys I can get in a place? Yep. All the pieces of the puzzle. Like, yep. let's get this. You sorted. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to... But it's one of these things if you... Like, I think if you have it or if you have it or don't have it, right? I was always the hyperactive kid. I oh, Like, even when I was, like, a few months old, my mom told me, like, you were always crying walking, sprinting to the house, hitting my head, hitting my chin, breaking everything. So I was always that super hyperactive kid. Mm. 
and then that that plays into business because now you're yeah. problem solving exactly. hyperactive about problem solving problem solving exactly mm. yeah yeah yeah, that's cool. Because that's what business is, right? It's just solving a problem, yeah. giving a solution to a bunch of strangers who... Exactly. And at the same time, is that, like, I realize that if I'm not in constant stress, constant tiredness, body, going to boxing, getting my ass whooped, going to gym, basically constant, constant, constant bombardment of stress, I'm not happy. Mm. I cannot be happy just doing basic things. I need to... I need to wake up at four. I need to work all day. I need to be super hyper stressed with my business. I need to go to boxing, drive to middle of the Dempa start getting my ass whooped for 90 minutes there, come back, go to dinner, have meetings, go to sleep at 11, super tired, wake up the next morning, do it all over again. And I can't have a, like a chill Sunday. I don't know, so like staying, let's do Netflix on top. <laughs> let's do something else, wakeboarding. Let's, let's smash our face into the water <laughs> on Sunday. How about that? <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So um, it sounds like you have a very a active lifestyle. Yeah. So how are you managing your stress levels? Uh, I think I've, I, I have been born with a very high stress tolerance. It's true that I, sometimes I'm ha I have challenges that really, really shocks me. But overall, I tolerate stress extremely well. And I like to be in a stressful environment. Mm. I don't like to be in a peace. It's not peaceful, of course, but not moderate environment. Like you don't have any risks. I like to have some things running through my vein. Mm. So the stress levels, I go to gym, train a lot every single day. I go to boxing two, three, four times a week. And that's where I put all my... My, my efforts, when I go to gym, headphones in, cap on my head, I don't care about anyone, just crushing it, 45 minutes, home. I put all the energy in those barbells mm. and bars, yeah. Yeah, so it's like a good release, right, of the stress. It's the best, Yeah. it's the best, yeah. because how you get the, all the tension you, you accumulate during the day and during the, your working hours, you just release it to that training session. Mm. And what about your energy? How are you managing your energy levels with when it comes to work and you know being productive? Work. Well, I'm hyperactive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything else than work. I have a very I that's the thing that helped me a lot from my personal training days. Because for me, transitioning from a personal trainer to a successful entrepreneur, I didn't have to sell my health. Mm. So I all I was always aware in knowing what I eat, how much I should eat, how I should read the label, what I should ingest or not. When I go to a holiday, I don't overeat. I always, if, for example, if I train, if I don't train today, I eat only twice and I eat m smaller portions. If I go to a hotel and I see an eclair or baklava on the table and I know, okay, today I didn't train, I don't eat the baklava. It's just discipline. So I think nutrition helps me a lot. At the same time, I drink one, two coffees a day, but I think everyone does. And hyperactive, I guess. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, you touched on there about the knowledge, the knowledge, right? Like, that's the, the knowledge of nutrition and how it affects your energy levels. Like, because you have that knowledge, it's easier to, to live life and be pr manage your energy better because you know, okay, I didn't train today, so I'm not going to eat that. I think sports and the, my capacity of releasing tension and stress is one of the main factors why I achieved so many things in such a short time because I started my business is only like four years and a half, five years. So only wow. five years I achieved so much because I always have a method to release the stress, release the pain, release the, all the buildup. And together with the knowledge that I got from the personal training, I know exactly I don't I know exactly what to eat. I know exactly what to consume. I know when I go in out, I know what to order from the menu. I know all that. Yeah. It's funny because as you're saying this, this is exactly what I say to my clients. Like this is yeah. what you need to know this stuff because then important. otherwise you go out on vacation and you just fucking get fat because yeah. you don't know what to eat. You don't know how much to eat, so when to eat. The first jar of life, it's health. You can be billionaire if you're stage four cancer nothing matters anymore yeah let's say not cancer not be that critical if you're super fat like 
you're still, you don't have too much confidence, right? Mm. So in health, for me, you have three things, nutrition, sports, and analysis. Every year I go to blood work, I do my blood work, testosterone levels, free testosterone, all the vitamins, minerals, all that. Mm. I have a doctor that's reading all that, you're good, here's your report, boom. If I need something to add, I take some supplements or whatever, that's basically it. And nutrition, I know that part super well from my background. And sports, as well, I do. You have to practice something, but you have to do regularly. I see a lot of guys, they're doing two months and then two months off. No, my friends, you start today and you never let it, let it go. Why is sports so important? Sports, I think is for me, is the number one, one of the most important things of my life because I always used to be active. And I don't know how life it is if I'm not active. I don't know how that is. I only have a small glimpse from when I was in Jakarta, seven days, my wife almost killed me in sleep. <laughs> 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 I was doing push-ups. After five days, I was doing two to 300 push-ups a day and just trying to sprint to the room. To <laughs> because if you have a hyperactive life and you always train, if yeah. you stay five days, seven days locked in a room, bro, it's mm -hmm. like killing you. Yeah. So um, on the sports, it's, I, I, I think it's extremely, 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 extremely important, especially what kind of sports are you going to do. But I'm, I like to play paddle tennis, I like to play tennis, squash, boxing, gym, all these sports. So you have to be active. Being active, but why, why is that important? to be active, in your opinion? Reducing stress levels, being disciplined, because from, for me, for example, for even now, for 100 sessions at the gym, maybe 30 to 40% I don't want to go. But I still go because I have to go. It's a must. So discipline, and as well, a thing that I, I do is, as you get further in life, our bodies are always going to be inclined to comfort because comfort means survival. So if you're not capable yourself of putting yourself in stressful situations, in stressful environments to produce, to induce stress over your body, your body is just going to be comfortable. And becoming comfortable, it's six months, a year, two years, three, you're going to become lazy and fat. Look what happens in Bali. Affordable luxury, you don't, with a few thousand dollars a month, you don't have to clean your villa, you don't have to make your bed, you don't have to cook food, you don't have to wash dishes, you don't have to do anything. If you stay two months, that's okay. But if you stay four years and you have that compounding effect, you're going to end up lazy. <laughs> I, feel, I feel attacked because that's, what, that's literally been my reality. So the last four years, like okay. last year I had a chef and I was just, I realized, man, I'm getting too comfortable. I'm like washing dishes even now. Yeah. I'm still washing. Not every oh, day. Oh, you're washing dishes. Yeah. We have one, uh, one guy that comes and cleans our villa once a week. We do our beds. We do our groceries. We do our dishes. Uh, the washing the dishes. Sometimes we cook. Mm. So we still do that. And I can ask someone to come every single day and clean after myself or a chef. I can do that. But I don't want to do that because I think it's, it's a limit. It's a limit and you have to always push yourself. If you're not capable of inflicting pain over yourself consciously, life is going to inflict pain over you and you're not going to be able to take that. Because if you want to have any kind of success in life, you have to manage stress. And if you don't put yourself in stressful situations or just not be comfortable, life is going to shock you. Mm. So that's your consciously thinking about that on a daily basis. On a daily basis, and yeah. Like you want to keep that edge of doing the work. So you 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 want to keep working because if you're not letting your maid clean your bed, make your bed, and you're not letting her do your dishes, then that means you have to do it, which means that you're working, and that's keeping you in that mindset of like I'm doing work, I'm putting myself on doing things that I don't want to do. Exactly. It's exa a funny story, so you understand how I operate. When I used to be broke, I had this magic omelette. Nobody in the whole world likes it. I give it to my wife, <laughs> only my dog. I give it to my wife, I give it to my father, mother. They all said, it's crap. So I have this 
I used to do more eggs, but now I do three eggs. Oats, salt, mix it up, make it like a pancake. That's it. So I used to okay. eat that in the morning, six eggs, seven eggs with oats. That will fill me up for basically the whole day. Even now that I can afford to eat any breakfast on the face of the planet, even now, 90% of my breakfast, 95% of my breakfast is, are, is that omelette. Mm. Even now, to remind me that you're just a slip away back to the omelette days where mm. you have to eat that because you don't have anything else to eat. Mm. So I keep eating that even I eat it today. <laughs> 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 that's a good anchor man that's like yes. a good thing to keep you realizing that well this this shit could go away if i stop p taking yep. my foot off the gas right yep. like it's easy because that's another thing man like entrepreneurs like, i've been through this right so now i'm like on the second wave but like the first wave of my success i was just so comfortable i got to the top of the mountain i was like ah i made it and, I, and yep. I, I took my foot off the gas because i didn't yep. have that omelet <laughs> you yeah, know i didn't exactly. i didn't have you something like have that to and my wife asks me do you like this that omelet, it's shit, basically. And I said, no, I fucking hate it. But <laughs> that's the reason why I have to eat it. <laughs> I hate it. I mean, just do it once. Oatmeal, eggs, salt, mix it up, eat it. As a pancake. Wow. And yeah. when you finish eating it, you're going to text me like, fuck your recipe. To <laughs> <go."> <laughs> the, the worst yeah. recipe that will make you a millionaire. Yeah. It's not... It's the, the roots. That's yeah. what brings me to the roots. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful, man. That's yeah. keep. It's like um, a good reminder. Yeah, it's like always. Because as you say that, I'm thinking like, what's the reminder for me? Because I, I, my reminder is like when I just lived on my, I, I moved into my parents' house again and lived in a sofa bed, like, and that was um, that was when I was what 21 years old, and then I and then I left. But that was a reminder to me, like, oh shit, I need to get my shit together. You know, I moved when I was 24, I moved with my father back home from Bucharest. And I said, my friend, I'm going to run this online business that I'm going to take products from China, put it into US, and I'm never going to see the product and I want to be a millionaire. And he said, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 I know, but let me sleep on that place. Until I make it up. <laughs> and I stood with him for like a year and a half, two years. Until I, so. Mm. What do you think it was that made you so committed to doing that? Like was it this was it like I'm going to figure this out and there's nothing else I'm going to do or for me I always knew and I always dr wanted I always knew that I'm not going to be an average person I always it doesn't matter how hard for me it's not about work I I used to when I started I used to work 18 to 20 hours a day every single day Monday to Monday and my idea was I need to create this online business, I need to be rich, I need to be free, I need to be, I need to own my time. And then I have to take care of my family. So for me, that was the, the motivation. And at the same time, I always liked to work hard on the things in which I believe in. That's why I was a personal trainer, because nobody's telling me what to do. If I make enough clients this month, I make enough money. If I don't make enough clients this month, I don't make money. So it's basically the same idea. I believe in my capabilities of training these people. I believe in my capabilities of changing the life of these people. And if I do a shit job, I'm going to have a shit pay. And then adding to that is the, the, the belief that you have in yourself was huge as well. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The trust in yourself. Yep. 100%. Like you're, you're really good at managing stress, so it's easy for you to yep. put yourself in a stressful situation because yep. you know that you're going to succeed. I always had massive trust in myself, massive. Nobody believed in my dream. Nobody, I, I told everyone I want to create an online empire. Nobody in my family, even my father had a business construction. Nobody understood, nobody believed it that from my father's apartment, father's bedroom, I will be able to do it. But I, that's, and that's the fun part. That's the most engaging part of life because nobody has to believe in your dreams. You're the only one that has to believe in your dreams. And the truth is that hate and hate is never going to come from above or, and if your close ones will be trusting in your dreams and will understand your dream, they will be ones doing it. Who believed Elon Musk is going to do the, 
Tesla and SpaceX at the same time and so many things. Only him. So that's, that's the, the beautiful part of it. If you have any kind of dream, if it, you have, you're willing to do the work, do the risks, sacrifice, you're going to do it. Mm. Something that I, I was reminded of recently is um, thinking back to, you know, like when I was at the peak of my powers, right? So like what was my mindset like then versus now and, and on, the, on the road back to that, right? So it's like before I was not believing anyone. That's, that's a key trait, right? Like, for example, you use Elon Musk. He, if someone told him, like, oh, this can't be done, like, I've done this for so many times and I'm an expert in this, I don't think this is possible. Yep. Like, He's you have there. to have that delusion. Exactly. Like, you, you have to do it. Yep. It's like, it is a delusion, right? It's like, I, I get it, I respect your opinion, I know that you're an expert in this, but that's not true. Fuck. I don't give a fuck, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true, that's true, that's, I mean... And you cannot believe in an idea, in a project, if you don't believe in yourself. Yes. Yeah. You, you, like, you must believe, like you must be obsessed, even like, like huge ego. Do you know that is this downward spiral of life? You start to lose, you, you lose your job, you start drinking, you lose your wife, you lose more of your money, you lose apartment. That's a downward spiral. You know what's true else? Upward spiral. You start working out, getting a better job, getting a girlfriend, doing more workout, getting married, getting a better, starting a business, doing your first million. That's an upward spiral. The upward spiral is feed by ego. You must be the crazy guy. My life is not going to be like that. I don't care what everyone else achieves. I don't care what everybody else believes. I want it to be like this, period. You just go. <laughs> yeah, as simple yeah. as that. Yeah, absolutely. Simple as that. <laughs> Have a good ego and uh, work to justify it. Mm. Just don't be sociopath. <laughs> That's not good either. <laughs> yeah, this is um, this is resonating because that's exactly what it takes. Like everyone, you know, I was thinking, looking at rappers, right? Like hip hop culture and stuff. Like right now, Kanye West is. I mean, Kanye West is a great example. Like he doesn't care what anyone says. He's I gonna love do. Kanye. He's going to do what he's going to do. It's fantastic. I absolutely love Kanye West. Yeah. It's hands down. Mm. I don't care what anyone else thinks of it. I, the guy is the man of God. He, he even mentioned it a few yeah. times recently. Yeah. yeah. He's a man of God. He's hardworking. He's crazy. Not crazy. No, no, no. He's passionate and he's a genius. Mm. He's not crazy. He's a genius. Mm. Like 100% genius. Mm. Yeah, and it's that trait that you can see, we can see in him, right? It's the same trait you have. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to, like, deviate from my path. This is my path. I'm going to do it. Exactly. I'm committed that, to this. Yes, but he sees, I mean, I'm not his age, and I have not been born in U.S., and I, like, maybe if I was going to U.S. and decide to move to U.S., I would be a billionaire by 35. I'm pretty sure I would be able to achieve that. But at the same time, I don't like being there. I've been there. Mm. I don't like. So I have not be, been born in in U.S. and lived there. So, of course, if you live in Bali or anywhere else, the opportunities are different from what you have there. But at the same time, in pure numbers, I think he has a bigger IQ than mine. And I think he sees the world with different eyes. And I think his brain RPM is a bit higher than mine. Do you think you need to have IQ, good IQ to be successful? No. To be successful, no. Mm. But to be at Kanye West level, for sure. Mm. As I mentioned, I truly believe he's a genius. And like to be a genius, you have to have over 142 IQ. Mm. Do you test your IQ regularly? Or you have you no, I did it a few years back. Mm. Uh, yeah, a few years back. I don't do it constantly. Yeah, yeah. Just I did it once. Let's see. Yeah. So, what is the advice to building a business? I guess like bring it full circle. You know. Full circle. Yeah. For Improve. someone watching, there's a yep. you know because now there's re we're about to enter the recession, right? Yep. And so many people now, uh, the the marketplace is growing massively for people that want to start a business online even you know there's a lot of people out there for example i've coached clients who have golden handcuffs right so they're in the corporate space making like 30 40k a month but they're they don't have any free time yep. you know so they want to figure out how they can pivot 
into some online business where they can have a, f f a location, freedom, lifestyle, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So you have a few stages of wealth. First stage, you have to make 10000 a month and $100,000 in savings. Then comes in freedom of location. Then you have to do twenty-five to $50,000 revenue a month and at least $250,000 in savings. Then you have time free, meaning you're, you can start releasing your time from that. And then you can go higher. You have a million in cash and around 100000 in profit revenue. And then you have the TLM, the 30 million liquid. So when you start a business with that in mind, you shouldn't first thing, okay, how I can move to Bali? First thing, you need to do $10,000 a month and have that liquid and be able to have a sustainable business constant. That's first thing, important. And then after you have the business, you have to understand that you have to leave away your ego for a moment and realize that you need team members around you that are more competent than you. And then you don't have to be a control freak. And if you gave them to do something, you must let them do their work, even if they do mistakes. Correct them. Tell them what system to put in place not to, for the mistake to happen again, but let them do their mistakes. So I think those two is create a business. Don't forget to, like, everyone is starting a business doing whatever and immediately, okay, move to Bali. Come here destroy all their business and everything with their expensive lifestyle and then have to go back. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true because, you know, the moment you come to Bali, now it's like opens your mind up. Oh, I could live this life. And, you know, you start spending more money on, on your expenses. Yep. Same with the comfortable, right? Yep. Bali makes you soft. Mm. Bali makes you comfortable. A lot of guys here that have been living here are softies. Mm. They don't go to fighting anymore. They don't go to gym anymore. They don't wash their dishes. They don't eat the <laughs> shitty omelet in the morning. <laughs> and that's like a snowball. In one year, two years, three years, you become lazy. And then comes the 22-year-old kid in Romania or whatever country that is willing to do 10 times more work than you and he was willing to whoop your ass. That's the thing with online, that you compete with the world. If I open a coffee shop in this area, I'm going to compete with the coffee shops around this area. But if I'm doing an e-commerce business and I try to sell mason jars, I'm going to compete with the guys that are selling from China, from Russia, from Europe, from US, from everywhere else. And if there is a competitor that's willing to do more work and be more competent than you, that's it. Mm. So I guess what I'm hearing is get yourself in an environment that will not lead you to be soft and not do these things, right? Yep. So maybe f for people watching, it's like Bali's not the right place. Unless they're going to go to the gym and go to do MMA and stuff like that. Bali is a huge bubble. A bubble of hedonism, of degeneracy, and sometimes spiritual <laughs> BS <laughs> in Ubud. I'm not saying all of it, but yeah. it's certainly a bubble. A bubble in which you, it's very hard, if you're not a very disciplined person, it's very hard to create a business, it's very hard to have a family, it's very hard to have yourself rooted, because in here you have affordable luxury, you come to Changu and in every single place is full of degeneracy, types and types of people, and if you surround yourself with shitty people, you're going to end up broke. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the environment is in, in really important, right? Yeah. So where you, where you choose to live is, is one of the most important decisions. At the same time, Bali is extremely good. Yep. If, for example, you want to start an online business, move to Bali, network for one month as much as you can, note down all the ways other people are making money, test, 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 but you have to do the work. If you come here, want to start your business, online business, and expect to work six hours a day, you're living in a bubble. Mm. So you have to do the work. Come here, stay for a few months, work, 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 and something should stick. Because here is like the epicenter of digital world, right? Everyone mm. in here is making money from a gazillion times of gazillion types of things. Mm. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how people are making money, and that helps yeah. you like hone in on like money like just yeah. thinking about all right how am i going to make money right like just even thinking that way is getting around the people that are making money exactly mm. so 
if you stay around, you're the sum of five people you surround yourself with. Mm. And if you live only amongst money, you will end up with some money. Mm. So if all of your friends are worth a hundred million dollars, your top four close friends, and you're worth three million dollars, in five years, for sure, you're not going to be worth probably not a hundred, but you're for sure you're going to work more than three. Mm. Same with with the gym. If you go to the gym with the best four looking guys there or the f f four fatties, you're going to end up like them. Mm. So why why do you think it's hard? Because all, everyone knows that, right? But most people don't do that. So why do you think that is? Lack of discipline. And thing low ego you don't have ego i mean everybody understands that it's important to surround yourself with good people but they end up going out with the guy that's a coward and is funny fuck him he's broke yeah. i mean i what's the advantage you're going to bring to my life i know for i i can bring this i can offer you this but how you are going to help me just because you're funny you doesn't mean you have to be close to me mm. yeah so it's like putting more uh, importance on your time right and the person what you're, what you're getting from the person exactly like the value everything in life is an exchange of value yeah it's an exchange of value if you go out if you go out with a multi-millionaire and he's offer you value this meeting next meeting he's offer you value again and he doesn't receive any value do you think he's going to come again with you no and you cannot tell him like, oh, he's such a bad person because you didn't offer him any value. Why would he spend hours of his life, energy, time, experience, and knowledge which he gained from networking, test and trial and error for free? He's not getting anything back. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, it's just that's how we are as adults, right? Because yep. like, we have to, we only have so many hours in a day and yeah. we have so many, as adults, we have responsibilities. So it's like yep. we have to, really manage our time better so way better wh wherever the biggest value proposition is we're going to go there exactly yeah. you have to offer value in other human lives in order to be in order for other people to care about you yeah like maya angelo said people will forgot your name and people will forgot what you did for them but they will never forget what you made them feel mm. and if they had this meeting with you and you offer them a lot of value and you improve their life or business or whatever they're not going to forget about you mm. for sure yeah if they have a big problem and they go out first time with you and you solve their problem with some suggestions and advices or some contacts for sure he's going to remember your name mm. so yeah so it's just like being open to just giving that value right yep. and not being not that withholding it it's like just give well, if you have it to give that's the thing that i never understood why people don't share things Mm. either way we live in a society that everybody is so fucking lazy everybody is lazy you can tell them exactly what you did to be successful and the vast majority of people will not even start to not, not even research it let alone do the work so either way the people that are going to receive your advice they are not interested in stealing your things so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which explains why you're so openly sharing about yeah, your I business. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem. Everybody that tr wants to try to do the things I did, good luck. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you built a moat around your business, right? Like, it's hard to get to the castle of Tudor because the it's moat is... Yeah, it's not about a, a moat. It's uh -huh. about the fact that, of course, it's a moat. It's about the fact that there are not many people willing to do the work. Yeah. Not many willing to do the work. Mm. who eats the same omelette nine years <laughs> ten years every single day just because mm. like you have to do the work you have to wake up four or five a.m work 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 how you're going to outwork me mm. like the percentage percentage of people that can outwork me it's super slim mm. what's your reward then after all this work what do you what what in, on a daily basis like what do you look forward to after you've done all this work is there anything? Just some spend, uh, spend time, high quality time with my wife, mm -hmm. family. I'm, I'm a pretty basic person. I, I don't have, it's not like I go do the training and get a candy and at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's yeah. for me. It's just I like to be hyperactive, pressure, be on the tiptoes all the time, stressed, mm. beaten down, yeah, exhausted. That's how what I like. That's what satisfies me. Mm. If you want to see me in the depression, give me a hundred million dollars and not to work for three years, not being able to work for three years, I'm dead. Mm. I or put me on a beach a week. Say, okay, you need to stay on the beach, no laptop, no work, pina coladas, free for free fall, a week. Mm. In a week, I will eat the sand. Mm. Yes, that, that's interesting because there's a lot of entrepreneurs that they want to make $100 million so they can be on the beach, right? So, yeah. what, so for you, you make $100 million and you're still working. So that means you have a different drive of, of, a, of a goal. It's the end same goal. analogy I gave you with the hunters. Yes. 10,000 years ago, there were hunters that went to hunt because they need food, and there were hunters that went to hunt just because they like to kill. Yeah. I think I was a hunter. I was that hunter that went just because it likes to put the traps and likes to organize the hunt in order for the boar to go yeah. to, to its trap. Yep. That's fun. Right. Okay, we get the food, nice. We eat, next. Let's go to the next hunt. Yeah, it's like the, the love of the game is keeping you yep. in the game, right? It's like yep. if you love tennis, you're never going to stop playing tennis. Exactly, the love of the adventure. Yes. We like to be adventurous, every single business and every single effort you're going to do, if you're seeing it as an adventure, that's nice. So you never retire? Exactly, never, right? <laughs> I, I will die working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will never retire. It doesn't matter how much money I'm going to do or whatever, if I'm still physically able to work i will work my entire life until i i will die mm. because you love it absolutely yeah is the thing that makes me one of the things that make makes me most happy mm. yeah that's awesome so uh just touching back real quick because i wanted to ask this question so the acquisition of your customers on amazon is that mostly just from amazon ppc amazon or? ppc google ads we had some organic traffic we have Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok. We have different methods and different strategies to acquire as much traffic as possible. As of now, we didn't focus on Shopify and D2C, but we're going to start from next year. It's extremely difficult to find an e-commerce products that product that suits best Amazon and Shopify at the same time because on Shopify, the AOV average order value is much higher, needs to be much higher than on Amazon because the customer acquisition is much more expensive because of the Facebook ads, Instagram, and all that. It's more expensive, but uh, we're going to do that as well. We're going to scale it up as well. But as, as well, like, for the recipes, in order to get, like, the best one, you must have patience because you need... It's, it's, it's very complex. When you see a lotion, if the, f the, the company did the true research and development, worked on r ingredients, percentages, manufacturing process, all that, it's a very, very lengthy and complicated process. Mm. So, so you have uh, partners now in your, in your companies? I have. Yeah. For some of the businesses, I'm alone. For some of the businesses, I have partners. I have two partners as of now. For launching, I have one. For supplements, I have one. And now for the another business that I will start with the programmer in Ubud, where I'm going to have another one. Mm. So these partners, what's their role? Like you mentioned, you got programmer in the, yep. the recent business you started. Yeah. But the supplements and the lotion and the hair products, what? The hair what? products is just me. Okay. Uh, on supplements, the guy is extremely uh, experienced in supplements, a very nice guy, and he knows everything supplements. For the launching, she, she's an old friend of mine. We started together. She's extremely good on operational part. She runs uh, most of the business. She's a very good and an amazing colleague, partner. So, so are, th are these partners equity partners or... Yes, we okay. Have, we have the businesses 50 50. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So, so you're not, you don't like to do the whole like 70 30 or? <laughs> no, we started as, as partners. Yeah. For me, the most important thing when I partner with someone, I must see if their main purpose in life is money and hedonism or they are more of a journey adventure person. Mm, that's a good distinction, yeah. Yeah. So, that's important. if I go to a meeting and I like, I don't have a problem with that, but. I want to see them that, 
hey, is your life purpose higher than getting a car or whatever? Or is just money, 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 hedonism, hedonism, black hole, black hole, black hole? And how do you clearly distinct the, make that distinction? There are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that I can see and analyze. But usually I, I know how to read people very well. Yep. Um, I think that's genetically. I, when I analyze them, I just see how they move, how they speak, how they surround themselves with the friends, the places they go, all that. I analyze for, for, for a few times and I, I will know. Mm. Yeah, because you've been around the block, so you know <laughs> it's, it's the experience yeah. you have of this. It's easy to, oh, yeah, that guy has hedonism. Right? And as well, like, my wife has a very good sense. In, uh, like, women have a fantastic yes. sense of feeling all these bad energy people mm -hmm. so she she is I, and i listen to her that's the thing i when she tells me that's a no-no okay that's a no-no thanks mm. so you're not using any like personality tests or anything like that it's just no. from what you know of reading people and no 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 no, no. i mean I, we do personality tests test when we do our hiring for the companies and do iq tests and all that but if i want to partner with you why do i do a personal personality test right. no it's fishy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i more and as well, I will know more about a person if I spend 15 minutes with them speaking than doing a personality test. Mm. I will have more data points and metrics in my head than the personality test can offer me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a really cool information for people to, to know because that's one of the biggest things is identifying someone's character. Because yep. if you make the wrong decision in business, man, like especially with a partner, that could fuck your whole business up. So you have to be good at um, judging the character. I have friends that some horror stories. Psh, Jesus Christ, with partners. Oh my God, I, I wouldn't want to go through that. So Yeah. And sometimes it's like you think you know someone and then money's introduced and then they completely money turn out to be someone Money changes the else. whole situation. Yeah. Money changes the whole situation. That's why I said... It, I must know if it's a hedonistic person or an adventure person. Mm. doesn't mean money is not important and we're not going to take money out of the company. We're not here to make money. I'm a, I'm a realist. But money is not everything. Mm. Yeah, because you mentioned that you haven't taken money out of your hair follicle, your hair company, right? Yep. So and the main account. The main account. And the main account. We have multiple brands there. Right. So with the other brands, with the partners, obviously you have to take money out because they need to get paid, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for the supplement brand, because the guy that my partner is successful, he's selling supplements for many, many years. He's doing exceptionally well in the, in the supplement industry. Uh, we didn't take money out of that company either. I didn't need the money. He didn't need the money. Okay, let's reinvest it. <laughs> either way, that company started as a joke. We said, okay, I launched the products for him and he said, okay, let's start a company. Okay, fine, here's 30, 40K each, whatever we put in, we invested, bam, bam, bam. And now apparently it, <laughs> it works. Mm. And, but for the launching service, we take money out, yes, because that's, as I mentioned, it funds the lifestyle. We take money out from, from the services. Mm. And so with the, with the partnering, what, where, where is the opportunity if, because what I've learned about partnering um, is to always pay if you can. So if I can pay this guy who knows a lot about supplements, it's better to pay him whatever he wants rather than partner with him because that complicates things. What do you it think about that? It depends who you partner with. Mm -hmm. If you want to partner, usually the people that you want to partner with, you cannot buy. I mean, how I can buy this, tell the supplement guy, hey, I give you $50,000 when he's making 500 a month how I can, like, you cannot. So then you have to come up, like, usually the people that you want to partner with, like, you cannot, you cannot pay them. It's not an employee. Mm. It's a partner. Hey, he's 50-50. I run the Amazon business, you run the productions. Okay, let's do it. Boom, boom. Nice. Mm. What about when, so in your partnerships, have you ever had it when, because there's no, no such thing as, like, 50-50 workload, right? There's always going to yep. be times where always, someone's yes. doing more work than the other person. So yep. 
how do you deal with that in terms of, oh shit, like maybe you're doing 30% of the work right now. Yep. He's doing 70% and he's like, fuck man, Tudor, I'm doing like all the work. Like, do you ever have that happen? Well, yes. And I have businesses in which I work more and businesses in which I work less. For example, for the supplement company, my team is handling everything. I pay them. We don't take money out of the company. So that's my own pocket. We do all the, everything inside Amazon and all that we do. But that's perfectly fine. I don't have any problem with that. So I had, but at the same time, you people must understand that sometimes someone works more than that. And that's, that's how it goes. Mm. But I don't have absolutely no problem. Like I do all the work without a single problem. Because mm. you love the game. You love working. I love the game. Yeah, I mean, for yeah. me, it's not about who's working more or who's working yeah. whatever. It's about let's do it. Let's, like, let's make it. Mm. So long as they actually are doing work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, they have to come with their part of the deal. Mm. But if I have to work more to create a business, that's not a problem for me. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, so um, is there anything else you'd want to share? I think we covered a lot of topics here. We covered a lot. <laughs> I don't know, like sharing. I don't have any. Like, if you have other questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because usually I ask that question in case there's something on your mind that you want some, maybe some guests have something on their mind. So, yeah, like um, in terms of, you know, uh, going starting out from scratch and investing their money into inventory to start a business, yeah. for example, on Amazon, and then get into that milestone of $10,000 a month. That's the first milestone, right? Yeah. And then reinvesting back into the business yeah. and not reinvesting into the lifestyle because they won't have money to invest in their business. That's that's fucking that's really important. That's yeah, really important. <laughs> that first needs to be your business and the st stability of your income. Yep. And then has to be the freedom of your location, but not freedom of your time. And only after you start making decent amount of money, twenty five to fifty k a month, and have half a million to a million in the bank account cash, then you can start to diversify your time mm. and reduce the detach your time from the from the business mm. but for that you need to have a good system if you don't have a good system you cannot do it either mm. so at the start it's like you need to you maximize the amount of money you can make from your time yep and then after you like you said get into 25 to 50k a month 500k in savings in cash then you can start looking at businesses or ways to scale your business that don't involve your time exactly yeah okay cool Just all so the businesses will involve your time Yes. All the businesses will involve your time, but then you can, you can say, okay, this Saturday I don't want to work. Let's go to Nusa Dua or Uluwatu. But until, for me, I, I didn't have that luxury until I hit some of the milestone that I proposed for myself. Mm. And you wasn't gonna, you wasn't gonna like deviate from that. Like this is the milestone I set. No, I, I'm gonna that's wait until I hit this milestone, and then yeah. I can do this. That milestone is like the omelet. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if I don't do that, I'm sorry, Tudor, you're going to have a shitty life. Goodbye. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really important for people to understand. And if you're watching or listening, uh, this is Tudor Tanas. Yeah. And I thought I got your name wrong, actually. When I first pronounced it, I was like, oh, Tanas. In Romania, it's Tudor Tanase. Tanase, okay. Yeah, but English people don't have the uh, uh. <laughs> and it's harder to, <laughs> to get it. Thank you so much, my Okay, friend. awesome, man. And where can people find out more about you if they want to learn more about you? Because uh, you're so interesting. YouTube, Follicle Booster, Instagram, T underscore Tanase. Mm. All right, that's it. I had one last question. So you are putting your face on your brand, right, with the yeah. Follicle Booster. How important is that to your success in your company? that you're putting your face out there? I think it's extremely important because why I put my face is none of the hair loss in my Knoxville companies have their face. There's only a few companies that have their CEO face and I try to position myself as a person, as you saw in this podcast, I know a thing or two about hair loss and beard growth. And I try to position myself as a teacher at the same time as a geek that likes to create the perfect recipes. Mm. So that's how I. Tr that's why I tried. I put myself out there and I try to offer as much value for hair loss and beard growth as possible. So mm. that's very refreshing because, um, yeah, I, I, I there's this guy called Russell Brunson. I don't know. Russell Brand. Russell Brunson. 
yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Click funnel, right? yeah, yeah, ClickFunnels, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was talking about how uh, the way to 10x a brand is by putting an attractive character of into course, the company. Of course, Tell, name me one medical company that has a person behind it. Mm. One. Mm. There's none. Yep. And that's why I know this brand is going to be huge. Mm. Yeah. And what's the plan to scale it up in terms of the, the traffic or what's like the overview of the overview. scaling to nine figures? Did you see? Well, nine figures is pretty close. Yep. But did you see better recipes, improve the recipes? What D2C, you said? Uh, direct to consumer, Shopify. Oh, right, right, right. Scale the YouTube channel. Not so much Instagram because that's quite dead, especially for companies. Um, better recipes. And the thing is with hair loss is you have to do it for your whole life. So my Nox deal, I'm using it and I will use it for my entire life. It's not a thing that you apply now and you don't have to apply after. So if the product is good and customer have success with it, and they don't have any hair now, and in two months they will have hair, their friends are going to notice, what the hell did you do with your hair? I've been using this amazing product, thank you so much. And we're going to create affiliate links for our brands, which we're going to give percentage of the first pur purchase and percentage for recurring revenue. Mm. And we're going to sell wholesale in, in the whole world, and basically we're going to handle only a small portion of the world, while we're going to do contracts with, for example, someone in Italy who wants to order the products, he's going to buy it in bulk from us and he's going to have a much better price than the retail price. Mm. And so that's uh, retail as well, like getting into We will stores. do it retail, yes. Yeah. For, sh for now, our production speed cannot even keep up with the Amazon sales, let alone if you start our Shopify and marketing outside Amazon. So after that, after we make sure that we can produce enough units to satisfy us <laughs> we, we mm. can look up into other markets and that means what maybe expanding getting different suppliers to handle more demand it's extremely difficult to get different suppliers because as i told you minoxidil has in israel one production plant That's doing right. the main seller so it's extremely difficult to diversify when you do a mason jar you can find other suppliers that can do the exact same mason jar because it's a matrix it's a mold and you fill it out in and you have the product. When, when you have a recipe, it's extremely difficult and the whole recipe is because it has to be produced at different temperature, it has to be stored in a different way, the raw materials have to be bought from a specific place, stored them in a specific temperature room, it's very complex. So the recipe, when you see a lotion, and if the, f the, the company did very well research and development, that's a lot of human hours involved into that recipe. Mm. And a lot of systemized and structure to create that recipe. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of work goes into it. Yeah, a lot yeah like why nobody got the Coca Cola recipe so far or the KFC recipe? So you know, far. I've always wondered about that. Why? You just think nobody tried it? <laughs> yeah. Of course, everybody tried it, but yeah. you cannot. It's the small things like the temperatures you're going to do, storage, all that small, small, small things. If you don't know exactly the SOP and structure of the recipe, you cannot copy it. Mm. Coca-Cola, good luck copying it. But mm. They tried it, nobody did it. Yeah. Mm. All right, man. Well, thank you for sharing everything, man. It's been... Thank you so much. It's been really good, man. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks. And uh, it. yeah, we'll, we'll link you up in the show notes. Yep. And uh, yeah, appreciate it, man. Yep. See you soon. Thank you so much, yep. my friend.